I realize not all of you have had hands-on experience. And frankly, none of us have ever faced a situation quite like this one before. I would not be asking any one of you to take this leap if I did not have complete faith in your ability to succeed. Your courage will never be more needed than it is today. No matter how fast you run. No matter how far you go. The beast will follow. Man cannot escape his fate. I have been waiting an attempt for a man of your strength to arrive. What is it you are seeking? I want the power to destroy my enemies and save my family. I'll find a way. I have been waiting an eternity. I have been waiting an eternity. For a man of your strength to arrive. I have been waiting an eternity. For a man of your strength to arrive. I have been waiting an eternity. An eternity. For a man of your strength to arrive. You cannot deny what you are. But I would not be asking any one of you to take this leap if I did not have complete faith in your ability to succeed. Your courage will never be more needed than it is today. I want to talk to somebody in charge. You are not fooling anybody when you say that what happened was a natural disaster. You're lying. It was not an earthquake. It wasn't a typhoon. Because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. And it is going to send us back to the Stone Age! God help us all. In 1954, we awakened something. Democritus was the first philosopher who had an atomic theory. He said that the human soul should capture the essence of things and thereby attain a cheerful, serene mood. He called it euthemia, the highest good of man. Curiosity is the most important part of our nature. Mankind's research for the foundations of the world and the origin of matter is what gets some people to dedicate their whole lives to the question what holds the universe together at its core. Why do we want to find out about things? Mankind is looking for adventure and does research. We find new things and invent. modern scientists pioneering a new era at the beginning of the 21st century. The ingredients of a new era are discoveries in atomic physics, political crisis, change and transition, change and transition, based on the endless curiosity of man on the threshold of further discoveries. CERN, the European Center for Nuclear Research in Geneva, Switzerland, is one of the largest scientific centers in the world. The most powerful particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, was built there to find the Higgs boson, the elusive particle that is there to give all known particles their mass. Latest technologies, scientific monster machines, and a journey beyond the known to us, known to us 
latest technologies. I want to talk to somebody in charge. Latest, latest technologies. Technolo I want to talk to somebody. Scientific monster machines. You are not. You are not anybody. Anybody. What is it? You what is it? You are seeking. The journey beyond the physical world. The journey beyond the physical world known to us. You're lying. What is it you are seeking? I want the power to destroy my enemies and save my family. Power to power destroy, to destroy my enemies. Power to destroy my enemies. We awaken something. Awaken something. Latest, Latest technologies, technologies, scientific monster, monster machines, machines, and a journey beyond, beyond the physical world known to us. What is it you are seeking? I want the power to destroy my enemies and save my family. The arrogance of man is thinking nature is in our control. Drink this. Drink this. We awaken something. The arrogance of man is thinking nature is in our control. You have no idea what's coming. Drink, 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 drink. Can you kill it? Drink. Latest technologies. Scientific monster machines. Monster machines. Monster machines. The arrogance of man is thinking nature is in our control. Monster machines. And not the other way around. And the journey, and the journey beyond, beyond the physical, the physical world, world known to us. To us. And, the and the journey beyond, beyond the physical, world, physical world, world, world known to us. You can't protect us. been waiting an eternity. I have been waiting an eternity. I have been waiting and I tell I have been waiting an eternity. Drink. I have been waiting an eternity. You're lying. It was not an earthquake. It wasn't a typhoon. Because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. We awakened something. And it is going to send us back to the Stone Age. building these ships. So when do we let the people know? Our mission is to assure the continuity of our species. Wasn't it also decided the people have the right to fight? What is it you are seeking? I want the power to destroy my enemies and save my family. The end of time to occur this year. This year. <laughs> this year. <laughs>
destroy us all.
I want to talk to somebody in charge. You are not fooling anybody when you say that what happened was a natural disaster. You're lying. It was not an earthquake. It wasn't a typhoon. Because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. And it is going to send us back to the Stone Age. Awaken something. Well, there's nuclear tests in the Pacific. Not tests. They were trying to kill it. You have no idea what's coming. Can you kill it? thinking nature is in our control. And not the other way around.
you run no matter how far you go the beast will follow man cannot escape his fate real head is still the cover those of you who don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I strongly suggest you do it right now before it's too late. He may be back. You might drop dead. You might die. Who knows? He's coming. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans tells us how to be saved. He tells us, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say the words, believe it in your heart. You know it's true, I know you do. God bless you, get ready. Hey, and if you're still here, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. Thank you. God bless y'all. Welcome to BBC News. There have been two explosions at Brussels airport and a blast on the metro in the city centre. This was not a random act of violence. This was not disconnected. They intend to carry out more and more and more of these terror attacks, whether Paris, whether San Bernardino, whether Brussels. Near the European Union headquarters, a Brussels metro train filled with rush hour commuters pulls away from the station and at 9.11 a.m., Another explosion tore through the last car. Boom! Oh, oh man. man! What the fuck's going on? Wow! Oh, shit! Wow! There is no such thing as ISIS. ISIS is a creation of the United States. We know that from official sources of the US military themselves. Uh, declassified documents from the Defense Intelligence Agency have confirmed that. You were both in skull and bone to the secret society. It's so sick that we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? <laughs> the conspiracy theorists are going to go on. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to the date where it happened. Of course, today, which is March 22nd. March being the third month of the year. You get three, you get 222, which is co coded, of course, for Skull and Bones 322. Uh, what I find interesting as well, you have the connection with the Boston bombing. You have Boston bombing, Brussels bombing, which is basically BB, and these two Bs are actually 88. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. Uh, well, why, why the big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. The person is smart. 
People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat, and 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you know tomorrow. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. A group of social criminals, these people in the space program, nassholes, I call them. And some of those people actually still believe the Earth is flat. Uh, so if a few of them want to believe that we didn't go to the moon, let them. Uh, it's not an issue that comes up in my presentation. Uh, well, don't. well, I mean, I mean, I mean, the Earth being flat—that that's clearly ridiculous. Though I've actually been contacted by some flat earthers saying I'm covering up the fact that it's it's some Atlantean conspiracy. Atlantean conspiracy. NASA. As you can see, we got a nice red serpent tongue coming through there. NASA. And there's the UN flag. Also the symbol of the flat earth. Oh, of course, if I say flat earth, then I gotta be an idiot. Right? That's what they told you, right? It's a ball. It's not Antarctica in this. <laughs> it's cold out here. Yeah, it is. It's like the South Pole. It's like the deep South Pole, if there was one. There isn't, though. The Peters Projection. It has fidelity of axis. Fidelity of position. East-west lines are parallel and intersect north-south axes at right angles. What the hell is that? It's where you've been living this whole time. The legislature recognize that there is a debate about whether critical the Earth thinking. is round or flat. No, no, no. no. And you let's said. encourage critical thinking by saying there should be a legitimate debate between whether the Earth is round or flat. Because after all, any idiot can walk outside we're and, we're not, and see that it's flat. This. this is very important what we're fighting for. Because I'm tired, I'm really, really tired of the manipulation. They do not tell the truth, they're lying. They get to know our history books. The history books are not true, it's a lie. That's why I'm like, oh. The history books are lying. You need to know that. You must know that. Steroid Santa Claus kicks and deals. It's a long fly ball going back, back. And the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open. You know, there's some comedians making jokes tonight, but uh, I want to talk about the joke that's on you. German cartographer Mercator originally designed this map in 1569 as a navigational tool for European sailors. The map enlarges areas at the poles to create straight lines of constant bearing or geographic direction. So it makes it easier to cross an ocean. But yes. it distorts the relative size of nations and continents. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is in reality 14 times larger? Yes. Here we have Europe drawn considerably larger than South America when it's 6.9 million square miles, South America is almost double the size of Europe's 3.8 million. Alaska appears three times as large as Mexico when Mexico is larger by 0.1 million square miles. Germany appears in the middle of the map when it's in the northernmost quarter of the Earth. Wait, wait, relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing's where you think it is. Where is it? I'm glad you asked. Okay, so here's the, uh, the picture of the Earth from, uh, from space. There it is. Since you were a kid, you've seen this image. But uh, you've never seen it from that point of view. 
you know what? We adopted this whole model like four or five hundred years before the airplane. Four hundred years before the airplane, pretty much. Like, like, like beginning of the 1900s. They went to the North Pole in the 1900s. This is 1482. Nobody went to the top of the globe, to the bottom, or flew up, or built a skyscraper until, it's funny, back in the 60s when, when they went to the moon, this is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight to actually go high enough to actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. So if they were wrong after 500 years, the question is, what they tell you? 1969, first lunar mission to the moon. You know, the first lunar mission to the moon wasn't so much about going to the moon. It was about having an event so you can go high enough to take a picture after 500 years to prove it was a ball. <laughs> And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. Mr. Armstrong, Bart Sibrel, ABC Digital. Wanted to give you the opportunity to swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon. The two most watched televised events in history, the moon landing and the towers falling. You have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Please I have a cake. Her. Why don't you swear to, why not? Why won't you do it? And it's funny when you click on Google Images, photo of the earth, you'll see 40 pages on Google. But it's always the same fucking photo. For those that believe in the Bible, the Bible does mention the edges of the earth, the four corners of the earth, and how Satan brought Jesus Christ to the top of the mountain and showed him all kingdoms of the world. How can Satan show Jesus all kingdoms of the world if the world is round? How can there be edges of the world if the world's a sphere? The Bible also mentions how the earth is immovable and is set on pillars. So for the believers I still believe in the ball earth, the round earth. Gotta reconsider, according to science and the satanic system, the earth is supposedly tilted at a 23.4 degree angle off vertical. And that leaves you at 66.6 .6 degrees off horizontal. Now what are the chances of that? Moon landing, 8.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1969. Isaac Newton, 1666. 6699 Most people saw a lunar landing and they swear on it because they heard on the radio. <laughs> CBS put up screens all over in Central Park, along with NBC, you know, so they could work with Group think dynamics. Reality is reinforced by group dynamics. What you see in that. The, uh, the zero G illusion also that you see astronauts, uh, they look like they're floating or flying in space. It's achieved through three different ways. <coughs> One way is through zero G planes. Uh, they're just Boeing 737 specially outfitted to do these parabolic maneuvers where they, they do a, a parabolic and then you have a zero G like 
free fall state where it seems like you're floating for about a minute at a time you can keep this this going um, the second way when they're like at the fake International Space Station uh, fixing things outside of it. This is done in a pool, in a dark pool. They're actually underwater. Um, and you can see bubbles rising out of the pool, uh, proving that they're in a pool in many of their spacewalks. Uh, so, so the outside space shots are done in the pool. The inside, uh, the, most of the inside shots are done in zero-G planes. And then some of the longer inside shots are done with a green screen and harnesses so they just kind of float on a harness in front of a green screen and with these three methods they're able to produce the um, zero g effect that everybody thinks is uh, them floating around in space uh, but in reality uh, anything that goes up comes right back down there is no point where you can just go up 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 and then oh I'm floating now, and I get to float through infinite space now forever. That's the illusion. That doesn't happen. You will always come back to the Earth. You'll always fall right back down. No matter how high you go up? As high as, high as any non-NASA source has gone. Proof right there, this is an official NASA photo of the first Apollo 11 lunar module landing on the moon. I mean, it's right there. This is proof, man. It's the picture's right there. It's landing on the moon. But the only problem I have with this picture is that it's taken from the moon. I don't know what the big deal was with being the first guy on the moon. Uh, it seems the camera crew was already there. Hey. All right. Do you see Photoshop? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and if those of you who think this technical difficulty was planned and think I'm scamming you, go do it for yourself. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in on the Earth in Photoshop. Do you see the Earth? Yep. Okay, I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, Levels, and I'm going to bring the levels over here. And I'm going to bring the levels up. Uh-oh. What is that? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Why is there a square box around the Earth allegedly taken from the scientists on the moon in Apollo 17? Then you got other pictures like this, the blue marble, right, that, are, that come out. Okay, well, there's a big problem with the blue marble, and I'm going to zoom in here and show you what the problem is. These are all composite images where they are really not very good at Photoshop because they're using the Photoshop clone tool to replicate clouds. It's an official photo from NASA. But plus, how many people think that's a photo? But plus, how many people think this is bullshit? <laughs> now, a lot of people's first question is going to be, well, where's the edge? And I was surprised to uh, see how easy that is to rectify, but it, I'm sure you get that a lot. How do you tell people when they come at you with, well, where's the edge? Why aren't people sailing off the edge or whatever? So in the flat Earth model, the North Pole is in the middle and the Earth is a disk shape and the Antarctica is all the way around holding the oceans in. And so it's a fact if you're at the North Pole and you go south, no matter which uh, actually, it doesn't matter where you are. If you go south, eventually, you're going to end up in Antarctica. But on the ball model, it's just a little ice continent underneath the ball. Yet in this model, it's all the way around you, holding the oceans in. As for whether there's an edge beyond the Antarctic ice plateau, this wall that holds everything in is about 100 to 200 feet tall. And once you climb up on the ice wall, it's a plateau of snow that just goes on and on and on. Uh, and the public and myself are ignorant at the moment as to whether it, there is an edge at some point, whether there'd be a barrier, a dome, uh, as many ancient cultures have said there is, or whether it's an infinite flat plane and it's just snow, ice, wind, and darkness forever. Please stop what you're doing and listen. This is not a drill. Oh, God. 
in the house, in the house. I can't tell you if what happened is an act of terror or an act of God. Where the hell did it come from? No idea. Yeah, people are trapped in here. <laughs> Wrong road. What are you telling us? We're trapped like rats. Stop! To prevent your poisons from spreading, your government has sealed you all within this dome. Go, run! Our best guess puts the dome at 20,000 feet, sir. Did he just call it a dome? You think we might be stuck in here a while? I think that even if what's wrong suddenly becomes right, the army's just gonna quarantine this place. I want roving death squads around the perimeter 24-7. I want 10,000 tough guys. To let me out! Let me out! I wanna... What's the most resilient parasite? An idea. A single idea from the human mind can build cities. An idea can transform the world and rewrite all the rules. Which is why I have to steal it. Never recreate from your memory. Always imagine new places. He's hiding something and we need to find out what that is. We gotta break out of here. Give him the kick! This was not a part of the plan! Flat Earth um, idea is that a, uh, a new idea? How long has this been around? No, the Flat Earth was worldwide for thousands of years uh, before this spinning ball Earth came around. The first person to think of the spinning ball Earth was also uh, the first Freemason, Pythagoras of Samos. Most Freemasons uh, trace their. Um, ancestry of a fuel back to Pythagoras as being the first Freemason um, and that was 2,500 years ago but his idea didn't catch on at all until about 500 years ago when Copernicus another Freemason and Jesuit uh, wrote his book um, promoting this spinning ball earth and uh, concept and then Kepler and Newton and Galileo they took it from there and now NASA and um, RASA and all the other space agencies, their experts like Carl Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson, they're continuing this heliocentric spinning ball earth gravity myth that's been going on for 500 years and they keep adding on to it now. Now you've got a big bang and evolution and aliens and come out and say they've found life on other planets soon. They've already given us fake pictures from Mars claiming that uh, there's a pyramid and sphinx on Mars trying to cement this alien progenitor propaganda into us. So are you saying there are no aliens? Not in the sense of extraterrestrials, since there are no extraterrestrial places. Earth is the only material plane. It's a plane, not a planet. And the planets are just stars. That what we call planets today were known for thousands of years as the wandering stars. They differ from the fixed stars in their relative motions only. Uh, all the fixed stars and the constellations, they, they're fixed together in, in uh, their patterns as they revolve around the heavens. But the planets, as they're called now, uh, used to be known as wandering stars because they seem to wander their own unique paths um, they just spiral around the sun and they have kind of a spirograph orbit uh, you can see in one of my videos called the ancient flat earth beliefs a model of it uh, to give you an idea but with the naked eye or with the telescope you can see for yourself that these so-called planets are just stars 
they're just lights in the night sky. They claim that the planets are physical terra firma that you can land on and potentially live on. And they also claim that the stars are distant suns in galaxies trillions of light years away. Now, these light years are things that they've come up with to try and convince you that those lights in the sky aren't as close as they actually are. They want you to think that the nearest star is actually 25 trillion miles uh, a trillion miles away and the, the reason they have to say this is because you can prove for yourself in your backyard with a telescope that the earth is motionless if we're really spinning around the sun uh, 200 million miles every six months uh, we would be on the other side of the sun right so you can by looking at the parallax change in the stars see whether that's true and there's not an inch in parallax change in any of the stars after six months of supposed orbital motion around the sun. So if that's the case, it's proof that we haven't moved. See how the moon travels at the same speed and direction as the stars? They all move together as one, and that's not possible if you believe the official narrative that the moon is a lot closer to the Earth than the stars. They'd all be moving at different speeds. This is the camera, is the Earth. And there's no way that those stars would move at the same speed and trajectory as the uh, as the moon. Why? Why all this deception? So what we've got now is a godless Big Bang, a a nothing for no reason in no time exploded and created everything. And then a bit of the everything turned into self-replicating bits and life spontaneously created and order and intelligence and consciousness all came into existence. Uh, so we've got this cosmology that comes from nothing. It's atheistic. It's nihilistic. It makes, it makes it as though humanity and Earth and everything here is just a cosmic accident. It's purposeless. It's meaningless. Uh, that's why this kind of atheistic materialism is rampant nowadays because this kind of metaphysics is what we're being taught um, so if you know if we're just on, in the corner of some galaxy and the fingertip under the dust of <laughs> the fingertip of of the universe then, then you know we don't mean anything so what it does is it spiritually crushes humanity so that we just think that um, you know me, me, me is all that's important because this life is meaningless, God doesn't exist, we're just a bunch of primordial soup that turned into monkeys and then monkeys turned into humans, you know, they, they got us believe in just a bunch of nonsense. The, the overall reason, if, if you're a psychopath, like the people who do control this world all are, then what you want, your, your ultimate goal is world domination. The best way to achieve world domination is through propaganda and mind control. So the way to mind control someone, if you've got them in a cage since birth, you tell them that the cage is the only thing there is, and everywhere else you can't go. You can't go to the North Pole, and you can't go to the Antarctic without government approval and licensing. They have little tours where you can go and take little photo ops, but you can't go yourself and explore what's actually at the North Pole. Maybe I'm being set up for something. Christoph, why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. Get away. See some of the world. Explore. I like to be an explorer, like the great Magellan. Oh, well, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore. You want to be an explorer. This will pass. We all think like this now and then. They're pretending to tell me what's happening! You had to shut her down. Thank you for your help. You're welcome, Truman. Locked it every turn. They go around the block. They come back. They go around again. Mary! You're a part of this, aren't you? You are scaring me! You're scaring me, Meryl. If his was more than just a vague ambition, he was absolutely determined to discover the truth. There was no way we could prevent him. Hi, 
way, Christoph, I'd just like to say one thing. You're a liar and a manipulator, and what you've done to Truman is sick. Well, we remember this voice, don't we? How could we forget? Sylvia, you think because you batted your eyes at Truman once, flirted with him, that you know him, that you know what's right for him? Maybe I'm losing my mind. I've been your best friend since we were seven years old, Truman. I know that feeling when it's like everything's slipping away. And the point is, I would gladly step in front of traffic for you, Truman. Truman, where are you going? You really think you're in a position to judge him? What right do you have to take a baby and and? and turn his life into some kind of mockery. Don't you ever feel guilty? Is that the best you can do? You're gonna have to kill me! I have given Truman the chance to lead a normal life. The world, the place you live in, is the sick place. He haven is the way the world should be. He's not a performer, he's a prisoner. Look at him, look at what you've done to him. I think what distresses you, really, is that ultimately, Truman prefers his cell, as you call it. And that's where you're wrong. You're so wrong, and he'll prove you wrong. With you always, even unto the end of the world.
truth. Have you ever just sat and thought how magical the Northern Territories are? We have the Northern Lights, which are the most mystifying and most beautiful sight that human beings have ever witnessed in the sky. And yet, do we ever sit and wonder what actually causes this without listening to some mindless drivel that a scientist teaches us and says, oh, by the way, it's this and this and this and this and that, A, B, C, D, and that's it, and we say so. When in fact, there may be something else to it, something more biblical that explains this. In Enoch, chapter 18, verse 5, he says, I saw that the winds of the earth support and lift the clouds. There I also saw the angels in flight. I was brought to a chasm I will call the end of the earth, having the sky above it. In Psalms 104 verse 5, it is said, Who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever? Other things that we notice about the north, like the musk ox, who migrate north in the winter. Butterflies and bees are found in the far north. Even mosquitoes are found in the far north. Birds resembling the snipe, but are unlike any species here, are seen migrating to the north and then back south in the spring. Farther north, one notices warmer weather. Icebergs are all composed of fresh sweet water. Tropical seeds, plants, and trees float in the fresh water of these same icebergs. The wind from the north carries far more pollen than any wind of the southern regions of the outer world. The remains of mammoths, hairy rhinoceroses, hippopotamus, lions, hyenas, and lions have all been found in icebergs. The aurora borealis have long baffled scientists. Many theories have been proposed to explain such phenomena. All are unproven and unexplainable, but allow me to offer another that the truth of Sheol, the underworld, allows us. These lights are the reflection on the light particles in the atmosphere from the lights of the hellfire, the central sun of Sheol. As Enoch further explores and is shown, we read in verse 18.6, From there going south I came to a place with seven mountains of precious stones, a place lit by fire day and night. Three of the mountains were toward the east and three toward the south. The three mountains toward the east were colored stone, one was white as pearl, one was a healing stone, and the ones toward the south were of red stone. The mountain in the middle was extremely tall, almost like the throne of the Lord. It was of stibium and the top as a sapphire. I saw a burning fire that was beyond the mountains. This is the place beyond the, beyond the places known on the earth, a place that is the source of great waters. This place is a deep chasm of the earth. There, at that place, fiery-like pillars seem to fall. The height of these pillars of light was immeasurable. Now, after reading that, um, what's really going to be surprising is one of the video clips that was brought to my attention. This video clip was leaked by a whistleblower of NASA. Immediately, this clip is being portrayed as fake. Um, I can see why it would be portrayed as fake because this really brings a whole new meaning. To the reality of the writings of Enoch and it brings some very good realities to the book of Revelation. If what Enoch is speaking of, of this great white throne that is in the northern regions, we can get a good understanding of the white throne judgment in the book of Revelation where those that deny Christ are brought forth and judged by God. 
if this deep circling chasm is indeed the opening to the nether regions into the lake of fire and Enoch has spoken of a place that was terrible to explore and it was the most frightening thing he'd seen that of dancing fire through this next clip you will get an understanding of how absolutely terrifying it would be through rejection of Jesus Christ to face God at the white throne judgment and be cast into this chasm indeed is something one would not want to go through I do believe that this is the location of where people will be cast into this is also the reason why I feel that they do not want the northern regions explored for this would bring about the reality the absolute shocking reality about God about Satan about heaven and hell and the underworld there is a reason why the world doesn't want people exploring these these things that are that are known about our earth because it proves the validity of the scriptures it puts to rest all the lies of the other religious dogmas and the false religions and the false teachings and the occult this shows us the absolute pure truth of the coming judgment and what those that reject Christ are going to face this is what I want to warn people of because I want to see people saved and come to Jesus I myself don't ever want to see anybody cast into hell I don't want to see anybody thrown into the lake of fire when they could just cry out and say Jesus I want you in my life I want to be saved whether you choose to believe this information or not time will tell and the stage is being set the time is running out the events are clicking into place one after the other this is why deceptions are increasing they're increasing every single day it's going to be a very scary time and when they're there facing this reality it'll be too late to call out it'll be too late to say forgive me I didn't know well now you know and this video is a warning to those that don't please get right with Christ see the reality of the truth See the reality of Yahweh, the one living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob.
while the vanquished were renamed Titans and forever imprisoned within the bowels of Mount Tartarus. King Hyperion and his legions seek to unleash the Titans and wage war upon this world. I will end the reign of the gods. If there is one human who could lead them against Hyperion, it would be Theseus. I have faith in you. Prove me right. I don't know if I can do what Zeus asks of me, but you can see the future. I cannot change the future.